it was quite late, so everyone slowly went to bed, until it was just me and Alice. The sweet smell of her funny green tobacco filled the air as she explained she had a surprise for everyone in the morning. I wasn't sure what she was talking about, as I soon found myself drifting off. The next day, everyone was wearing their best clothes, Alice had finally talked them into going to her church. There was going to be a summer fete in her town. They were all driving in Mr. Silton's van, but it was so cramped that I thought it would be better if I took my usual method of transport and travelled by train. I took the fisherman's boat to the mainland. I looked forward to going to Alice's church in Sitcom. It was so nice there. I needed to use the passport machine to open the huge door. I made my way into the town. Mind the doors. The trade is now departing. This is factoridden. Mind the doors. The train is now departing. This is it, Kim. A man in a nice white dress spoke of creation, life, death, and ascension. The stories were slightly confusing, but I found them very comforting. After the service, Mr. Silton and some of the others were all very excited to buy some smelly green tobacco from the man in the nice dress. Come on girls, said Alice as she offered the cigarette. Anyone partaking? But Mrs. Silton pointed to her pregnant tummy as she said, you're as bad as my husband. 
The man, who I found out was called the Vicar, took the cigarette. Robot, as you know, he said as he took a deep breath. Our sports day is this afternoon, do you think you're up to the challenge? I walked up to Sim and the vicar, but I wasn't sure what they were talking about. Yeah, said Sim, totally filled the basement. She's got three old garages as well. All full, stuff everywhere. I mean, it obviously hit me hard when... Alice said she was popping inside, let me know if you need any more help. If you really want to help, do me and yourself a favor. Stop collecting the bicycles, and everything else. You've got to let go. I think Alice made the decision right then and there. As she just turned to me and said, It's all yours. found was a small photo album. I decided, I would leave it here. After I had cleaned their basement, Alice and Sim got back in the van with everyone else. So I caught the train back to the house, which I suppose now really was our family's home. Mind the doors. The 
trade is now departing. This is Big City. Mind the doors. The train is now departing. Mainton was the next stop. I could get back to the mainland and miss the Siltons from here. This is Maiden. took the fisherman's boat to the old man's estate. When I got back to the house, it was quite late, so everyone was going to bed. For once Alice wasn't smoking her smelly tobacco, and was actually the first one asleep. And so, I actually felt quite peaceful, as I made myself comfortable for the night. Japan calling. This is Japan calling came the voice again as the screen crackled into life. Heather leapt across the room, this is Nighthawk, she said, we're receiving you, what happened, Oba? Dr. Hero sounded so happy to speak to us. He explained that they were forced deeper into their bunker. He said they had lost many good people, but managed to fight off the robots. Well, said the old lady, we're nearly halfway there. As long as we get the last few bits we need. We should be able to broadcast the nice virus in a matter of weeks. Do not worry, said Dr. Hero. We will survive. This seemed quite valuable. Now, this was clearly worth something.
Something's well worth less junk, but this could be sold for a decent price. Robot sounded just like me, but much deeper when he said, Prepare to die. Diamond light. Dynamite. came from this robot was a large deflated rubber ball. I had no idea what it was, but had a fitted to power up in a matter of minutes. It wasn't perfect but she made it work. Heather explained that by tapping the up button twice, then pressing the run button, I would be able to inflate a large helium balloon. I would then be able to float upwards for a short period of time. <laughs>
the old, the old lady, lady took the circuitry from me when, when I got, got back. back. While, While I was, I was gone, gone, Mr. Mr. Deck, Deck had tried, tried to escape, escape so, so Mr. Logan, Logan was now literally holding his chain, chain just, just like, like the dog. dog. The blind, blind man had finished, finished up the wiring, so we went, went to the roof to attach, attach the satellite, satellite and, and prepare for broadcasting the nice virus. When we got down from the roof, everyone was really happy with how the satellite dishes were going, except Mr. Deck. When Mr. Preston laughed and told him to cheer up, he went into a rage, shouting, I hope this all goes horribly wrong, I will double cross you all at the earliest opportunity. All right Deck, said Mr. Silton, back to the dog bed with you. <laughs> 